Hello friends and happy Wednesday. Today we're going to be looking at the road to mercy. In Matthew 9 13 it says, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. We as Christians need to let this verse smack us right in the face. The reason why is that we have become modern day Pharisees, that Jesus came to earth to stop us from being. Jesus here in Matthew is quoting from the Old Testament, Hosea 6, 6, and it will be quoted again in Matthew 12, 7, when Jesus is criticized by the Pharisees for allowing his disciples to pluck grain on the Sabbath. In the Bible, when certain phrases are repeated, pay attention. It's important. See, there is a wonderful book called The Principle of Mercy by John Sobrino, who explores the Good Samaritan story. His observations were as follows. A quick recap through the Good Samaritan parable is where a man is robbed and left half dead on the side of the road, and three separate individuals pass him by, a priest, a Levite, and a Samaritan. The only person who stops is a Samaritan, who takes the man, cares for him, and pays for his recovery out of his own pocket. Why is this story relevant to us today? It's because the Samaritan was stopped because he was moved by mercy. He was moved by compassion. He was just a person whose heart could be moved by mercy. Do you have room in your heart today to be moved by mercy? Let's take a look at what the Pharisees did that was so repulsive to God. In Matthew 12, 34, it says, You brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. The Pharisees used sacrifices as a way to judge other people. They did not associate with sinners, and they avoided work on the Sabbath. And when they saw others not sacrificing and doing this, they judged them. This dynamic is present today, especially in Christian circles. We live in a culture that teaches people, if you pay your dues by sacrificing and suffering through intense study like law school or medical school or business school, that you deserve to make insane amounts of money and that all those people who didn't sacrifice appropriately like you in high school or who didn't go to college, that this culture suggests that they should suffer for it, should pay for it. This culture also suggests that if I sacrifice hard enough in my youth for an extravagant lifestyle and I save up enough money that I am allowed to stockpile my wealth and more, and I'm not supposed to feel selfish about saving up and that I, heart, I paid for my things and I paid my time and suffered. So now, why should I have to share? Why don't others sacrifice like I did? And why don't they also reap the benefits? I suffered, so now I deserve to keep it for myself. But when we begin to think this way, that if we sacrifice enough to God, Things that we believe, like if I sacrifice sex before marriage, or I sacrifice by not taking alcohol or drugs, or if I don't say cuss words, or if I don't watch inappropriate movies, TVs, or listen to inappropriate music, then we feel enabled to be critical of other people and appear just like the Pharisees who Jesus despised. A kind of mentality of a holier than thou. Do you know that there are two types of mercy? One is a worldview of mercy, and another is a biblical view. A worldview suggests that those who deserve it, we should be moved by mercy and give them what they need. The biblical view, everyone deserves every care that you can provide them. Everyone deserves your compassion. And that it's within all of us to give out of ourself for our neighbor. And who is our neighbor? We learn in the Good Samaritan, it's anyone especially that person that you might not think is your neighbor. That's your neighbor. So I'll leave you with this scripture from Romans 5, 8. This is mercy. Parentheses, this is love. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us.